Today we are going to make pontoons or floats for an airplane that we built in a previous video. If you haven't seen that video I'll leave the link on the screen or in the description below. The airplane has a good size, flies great and is good for beginners because it's also very cheap. So I started designing the pontoons following very basic rules. The floats have to be at least 75% the length of the fuselage. They have to have a step and it should be a little bit behind the CG. And the nose of the floats have to extend a little bit forward from the propeller to have more stability. And there have to be some clearance between the propeller and the floats to maintain the propeller away from the water. So I used AutoCAD and Fusion 360, although I used Fusion 360 to visualize it in 3D. But I ended up using the AutoCAD drawing. So I printed the plans in some paper sheets and transferred them to Foamboard again. I'm using Foamboard because it's the same material I used to build the plane and it's also very easy to work with. Building these pontoons is very similar to building the fuselage of the airplane. We're using the same material, same techniques, it's the same thing. There is an important difference though. We're trying to make it waterproof. And that would be almost impossible with this material. Unless I cover the pontoons with fiberglass or something similar, just like I did with the RC boat that I built in a previous video a long time ago. But that takes a lot of work. So for now I'm going to try this simple design and see how it goes. By the way, if you want to build these pontoons, you can download the plans from the description below. Remember that this will work only with this airplane or a similar size and weight airplane. If you already made the airplane, the build process will be familiar and is straightforward. I'm trying to not leave any gaps, but I think the water will go in anyways. But at the same time, using this material makes them so light that I think they will have a good chance of floating. So here they are, ready to go, but now we have to place them on the airplane, and I don't have any idea how to do that. So let's figure it out. Of course the first step is to remove the old wheels, but we're still using the rest of the landing gear. And we'll need to put an extra piece of landing gear to make the whole structure strong. For that extra piece of landing gear I'm going to use this armature wire made out of aluminium. It's very easy to bend into a shape, but it's strong enough to hold that shape. This extra servo will have the task to move a small rudder under the water. Yeah. I made the small rudder with some barbecue skewer and balsa wood. Yeah. And that's it! It's time to go out and test it. There is a park with a very small lake near my house perfect spot for flying this. I also brought with me an RC boat in case of an emergency. It's a very fun toy though.
And this is the first time I'm going to test the pontoons. Let's see how it goes. Well, at least it's not sinking, so that's a good sign. And here I go for a takeoff. Sketchy and almost tall, but I did it. And now I face a new problem. This spot is not as perfect as I thought. These tall plants are blocking my line of sight, so I can lose visual of the airplane very easily. I was very uncomfortable flying like this, so I decided to land quickly. But even using full flaps I was going too fast, and I didn't want to crash into the water. Ouch. So the whole landing gear got a little bit damaged, and look at that amount of water getting into one of the pontoons. Unacceptable. And then I tried to turn around and bring him back, but that's what happened. And then I started sinking, so I had to use my plan B. Back to improving the design, I decided to fill the pontoons with some foam. That way, if the water goes in, it won't be able to fill the pontoon, because it will be already filled with foam. In this case, styrofoam. Which is a low density material and it will naturally float. I'm also using Gorilla Glue that expands and creates some kind of foam and it's also waterproof. So I'm putting this glue in every corner. But it doesn't matter how much I try, the water will find its way in. So that's why the idea of filling it with foam. This time, before going out, I'm going to test it at home. And after a few minutes in the bathtub, it seemed to be working well. So, let's go out once again. Well, here I am in the perfect spot for flying. This time I will be here. And on this side of, the, of this small lake, there is plenty of space to take off and land. And I have visual all around. So I don't have plants or, you know, tall grass to limit my vision. So this time I'm very confident that we will fly this a lot better than the last time. Beautiful handling over the water. But now, it's time of the truth. That takeoff was a bit weird, but I made it. I'm not sure what's going on, but as I was picking up speed, it was pulling to the left, even with me trying to correct to the right. I guess it's just a matter of practicing more. And there I go for my first landing. A bit hard, but it was okay. The plane is in good shape. 
from there I'm going for a second takeoff. And this time it went a lot smoother. And again, another landing. But now it's time to have another perspective. So I place a camera inside to see how it looks during the takeoff and landing. This was actually a very cool project. Guys, show some love leaving some likes and comments and take a look at our new Facebook page and group to share some of your projects. And by the way, the online store is open again where you can buy this navigation light system, which is very simple, but it looks great. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next project.